you would you like to know the organization you represent and tell us a bit about what you do. Thank you, Diko. Yes, my name is uh, Evelyn Edumo. I'm the Chief Operations Officer at Ackland Properties and Investment Company. Uh, majorly what we do, we um, Ackland Properties is a subsidiary of Ackland Group. And Ackland Group is a 360-degree run uh, system that majorly builds, uh, conceptualizes, develops, uh, we construct, and we do post management. Uh, in Ackland Group, we have three major subsidiaries. We have the development arm, we have the construction arm, and we have the facility management arm. Also, we have other small subsidiaries on there, but these are the three uh, major ones that uh, are at the forefront. Okay, thanks. So, we had a discussion today. Can you tell us your takeaways from the panel discussion? Uh, yes, uh, the discussion this morning was majorly around the you know, um, infrastructure in the sector, you know, sustainability, uh, government input, uh, you know, and the impact of PPP arrangements, you know, around um, the real estate sector. And, you know, it was a good uh, one. We discussed around various aspects. Uh, majorly, we touched on the importance of PPP, knowing fully well that, you know, it's a fundamental part of growth in any economy. You know, the government is an enabler, and that's why, you know, we encourage a lot of PPP. Now, the issues and the challenges that we have had with, um, you know, PPP has always been that it has not been geared, you know, around the interest of the average Nigerian. It's supposed to elevate a number of uh, uh, people out of poverty, you know, raise, raise the, the, the social uh, tier, you know, but we've not been able to achieve that fully. Another thing that we raised was, you know, the... Um, arrangements around how this has been done and that's how it has not been allowed to be driven fully by you know the private sector and ends there's no sustainability because you know with government you have issues that you know, borders around lack of continuity you know sustainability the viability of even the ppp you know project itself and so we discussed around possible um, future ways to handle PPPs, which we talked about um, creating cities or new um, projects that are, you know, eco environmentally friendly, they're socially friendly, and they also meet the tenets, you know, of government. Um, we also talked about um, the emergence of new cities, how the government can help us, you know, to ensure that as private sector players, you know, uh, we invest in infrastructure and they in turn, you know, give us things like tax rebate, give us policies that would help, you know, us to be able to invest more. Because the, the downside of um, heavy um, um, investment in uh, infrastructure for developers is that you have to load the load of that uh, 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 budget onto the home buyer. And the, the, the purchasing power of the average Nigerian does not quite meet, you know, very high end uh, uh, pricing points because what happens is that if you have to take care of infrastructure yourself, then you have to put it on the end user. And of course, that also further, you know, erodes the viability of the average Nigerian owning a property, you know. So we, we touched base on a lot of those um, factors and um, we hope that um, we we'll be able to make much more. And lastly, we talked about you know, creating pressure groups, lobby groups within the sector amongst ourselves okay. to see how we can approach the relevant authorities and come together to make better you know, decisions that will affect us you know, uh, across the line. So it was a very robust uh, conversation, I would say, even if time was short. Okay. So one of the biggest um, challenges in the real estate sector, which the keynote speaker of today raised, was the fact that a lot of housing estates in Nigeria extremely expensive for the middle ones to purchase. So if we are going to fix the housing deficit in Nigeria and we don't have structures to address this set of people, mm. there's a belief that we never meet the housing deficit in Nigeria. So are there things your organizations are doing like yourself to mm -hmm. make sure that oh they are housing that housing is affordable for even the middleman on the street. Well, I, I completely agree with that report. Uh, we have repeatedly said that the status of um, you know, the housing deficit is constantly on the rise and it will keep being on the rise. And the challenge is that the, 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 the challenge for purchasing houses, formal houses for a lot of Nigerians is very low. The disposable income of the average Nigerian is not meeting with uh, the inflation concerns. So people, I mean, are having to deal with a lot of variations, a lot of inflation costs, but you know, their disposable income is not changing. Um, as a company, what we try to do is to generate products that are 
you know, geared towards that problem. One, two, we try to look for financing options that uh, subscribers or most home uh, buyers can tap into. We do what we call a developer's mortgage, which gives them a longer payment period and allows them to be able to live their day-to-day -day life, you know, from this disposable income and to also, you know, have the dream of being able to purchase, you know, um, um, a property. Yes, and uh, you know, it's really sad because you see, when we say the deficit, deficit is actually in the lower tier of the pyramid. You know, the people in the low class sector, the middle class sector, are the ones that majorly are experiencing this, you know, deficit. And then again, that's where the government needs to come in. We talked about um, um, availability of land, especially say in a. a, a a state like Lagos, you know, amidst other states, the government needs to be able to give us access to land. And if it gives us access to land, we can collaboratively, collaboratively come together and see how we can raise a lot of people into the formal housing sector. A lot of Nigerians do not stay in formal houses. They don't have the basic amenities. They don't have good water. They don't have good road. They don't have good electricity, good infrastructure, which are the basics of good living. It is not a, you're not doing them a favor by giving them those things. It is what they deserve. They are taxpayers, they are people that deserve to live in this environment. And you know, that's where the major problem is. And we hope that as we keep having these conversations, we keep talking about this, you know, more solutionary will be brought to the fore. Okay, so um, the last question. So what's your, what's the outlook for your friend? What is, where do, we, where do we want to see in the next five, 10, 15 years? Uh, well, um, Ackland um, Property and Ackland Group um, were a team of very young, um, hungry, ambitious people. We're very forward thinking. Uh, we are playing the long-term game. And we have various goals across various, you know, parts of uh, the metropolis and outside of Africa. In um, in a space like Eco Atlantic, which we majorly play in, um, because it is environmentally friendly and it meets all the conditions of what we're looking for. We're looking to be able to develop 20% of that city, and that's a huge, huge, you know, dream as a company. Across other sectors, we are looking to help to close out on the market deficit. You know, it's a big goal, but as a company, we're forward thinking. We're young. We believe strongly that we would be able to achieve it, you know, provided that we have the zeal and the resilience that it takes. And we truly want to showcase that the true Nigerian spirit is of one that, you know, can do, is a can-do spirit. When you put your mind to it, you can do it. And provided that there's life and there's hope, we believe strongly that we'll be able to achieve this dream.